All right, so we're exactly a week to the day since the Daytona race. And uh, when you have a big, important race, I learned this from Jerry Rodriguez, you should uh, give it some time. He, he calls it the 72-hour rule before you jump to any conclusions or even really make any statements. And so I took uh, double the 72-hour double the rule before formulating my thoughts into something hopefully decently cohesive. And so how did the race go from my perspective? Uh, the whole weekend started off pretty good. It was fun. I did the Pro-Am relay, which was a lot of fun. And I felt like I swam decently well in that. I was, I think I was uh, 50, like 55 seconds down to the front guys for that. And so I was like, all right, great. And I was on a couple of good feet and stuff. And then we got to the actual race on Sunday and... Uh, I got in for the warm-up, and I used one thing differently. I used my velodrome suit, which I really, really like and liked on the velodrome, but I failed to appreciate how much tighter it was really cut for TTing and cut for being down in the TT position and, uh, you know, sticky stuff on the arms so the, sh the sleeves stay really nice and tight to your to your shoulders. And I failed to appreciate... Um, just how restrictive that was going to be. And so in the warm up, I was warming up and I was like, for the first time in my whole life, my shoulders were burning, the fronts of my shoulders. And I was like, uh oh, this might be a bit of a problem. And I actually had another suit in my bag, a sleeveless suit that I had made in case um, it was a non wetsuit swim. And I actually thought to myself, like, ooh, this, I think I might, or I think I should get out right now in the warm-up and go switch to that suit because I think this might be a problem. So anyways, I didn't do that. I kept warming up and it was only a few minutes before, before the end of the warm-up and the start of the race. So so then we get in, I don't know, 30 seconds you wait and then the gun goes and as to be expected with a world championship event with all the fastest swimmers in the sport, really, really fast takeout. Uh, I felt like I took out decently well you know, I still was on feet coming around. I was fighting, fighting. I was very at the very back of, of the pack I wanted to be in. And then coming out after the first lap, um, I, a little gap had opened up. And so then looking at the results after, I was about five seconds down to the group that I wanted to be in um, after the first lap. And then once that elastic snapped, then I lost a massive amount of time on the second lap. And to that group... I was almost a minute down. So that was a huge problem. And the whole time, of course, the negative the negative uh, dialogue starts going on in your head like, oh my gosh, this is this is this is a really, really bad start. This is not gonna be good. And so then out onto the bike. Unfortunately, when you have a huge deficit like I had, three and a half minutes, which is absolutely unacceptable, especially considering that I, I, I have been swimming with a lot of guys in previous races who were in the pack in front of me it was really disappointing. And so then I knew on the bike, unfortunately, I was going to have to basically throw caution to the wind and smash it. And I felt really good. I, I was within myself for a lot of it. I had Sam Long with me and we basically concluded that our best bet was to just take two, two laps a piece try and hold it decently steady and just try and pull back some time. And one of the lessons learned as I was learning during the race, unfortunately, is when you swim like crap, damn, you got to work hard. Like not only because you got to make up a deficit, but because there's just so many guys to pass. That group of guys of, let's say, 10 or 12 guys who was in front of me, by the time we caught them, they had spread out. And so now it's like 12 passes you've got to make, not just like one big pass. It's like close to 12 individual passes. And when you're going 48 kilometers, I was averaging 48 and a half kilometers an hour to get past these people and not risk a penalty or anything. I mean, you got to get over 50 kilometers an hour. And to do that when you're already moving that fast takes like 400 plus watts. So I was, I was physically prepared to push 360 to 370 watts, which is what I trained to do. And in the end, it's what I ended up averaging 358. Uh, but I was not prepared for the, the way that, that we ended up having to ride that, that uh, bike. And, and so um, I got off the bike 
and I felt like some of the weakest my legs have ever felt uh, coming off the bike, especially after not even doing the whole 70.3 bike. Like we still were 10K shy of a 70.3 bike and I felt so horribly weak. And I would attribute that to one, having surged a million times. Like honestly, I surged, let's say, cause then eventually you were passing guys who were getting lapped who you didn't want to take risks. Of course, I mean, I don't want to get a drafting penalty being so anti-drafting and so I can't take any risks in that department and so you know it probably was around 30 surges of of uh 400 watts or so and I just wasn't prepared for that and then as well I found which I didn't give much thought to beforehand was because there was so much action going on it was so crowded congested just so much action happening so so frequently um, I just did not have a sound nutrition and hydration plan. Well, I did. I, I did have a plan, but I did not stick to the plan, and I and I was very distracted. And I believe that also uh, those combination of those two things really uh, contributed to feeling horrible coming off the bike, which I knew I would feel horrible. I said this in the videos leading in that this is the hardest bike probably that you'll ever do, really. Uh, because there is no relief and I truly never really never ever took any relief I didn't even really feel the need to take any relief like to get out of the TT position I never had the urge to or anything because I did I do believe I prepared properly for it uh, but I was fried and I know that there was a nutritional component to it because I ran the first two laps I felt like horrible absolutely horrible and I was making no distance I was running even basically with the guys who I came off the bike with who um, you know, I, I feel like normally I, I would, I would be putting time into and, but on those two laps, I, I took a, I took a half a gel and I took some cola and by the third lap, I actually was like, oh, this is what running feels like. And, and then I actually started, that's when I started to make a move. I think I was in ninth place and that's when I actually started to make up some time. I actually started to feel like, oh, wow. Cause it was really a shame because like I'm in the best run shape I ever been in especially off the bike too. Like I've been doing really good brick workouts, but I did not run like I, I had been running at all. And, and I do believe there's a nutritional component to that because once I got a little bit of, you know, let's call it the jet fuel into the, into the bloodstream, the cola, uh, then, I, then I actually started to come back to life a little bit and I made a charge there at the end and, and ended up working my way into fourth place. And lap three, I actually believe I ran even with Gustav. So um it was really disappointing though i'm not gonna lie it was really disappointing because I, I feel like across all three disciplines it did not show uh what i what i was capable of and what i had trained to do so so that that you know in normal season you'd have a few races to kind of work out the kinks you know i, I definitely would have not used that suit i'd use a different suit a suit for instance, maybe even a sleeveless suit. Normally I would have the, the, the arms rolled down and roll them up in transition so there's not that restrictive piece, but because the suit was so tight in there and it was sticky arms, it was actually impossible to put this suit on once wet. And so I, that wasn't an option. Hindsight, obviously, uh, I, would, I would choose elect to wear my, either my old one piece or the sleeveless. So there was that. I wish I could have that back because I, I literally missed the pack that I should have damn well been in by five seconds over one kilometer, swimming with Boris and, and Sebastian and, and those guys. And those guys ended up swimming almost a minute ahead of me. So wish I could have that back. And then I wish I could go back and, and execute my nutrition strategy a little better. And it's just amazing how being a bad swimmer, how it's like it, it compounds the problems you know, if I can analyze Gustav's race, who he raced an amazing race across all three disciplines, he looked like a guy who had years of 70.3 racing experience at the highest level, yet he's only got one or two races, which shows you the tactical IQ of the guy because he swam where he needed to swim. Of course, he's about, I want to say he was about a minute down to the front, but then he was in a beautiful position in that he wasn't with all the guys in that front pack who were all jockeying and, you know, passing and taking leads on the front. So he got to ride nice and steady, just in no man's land, and just made sure to keep them in check, which is the absolute best way to execute a bike ride. It also is going to allow you to stick to your nutrition plan because you're not jockeying with all of these guys or like me and Sam smashing, smashing, smashing. And so execution was absolutely beautiful. 
Um, so hats off to him for, for A, just being a great athlete, and B, being a great tactician. Um, but anyways, that's the problem with sucking at swimming is it's like this, this compounding effect. You, you lose time in the water. You work really hard to lose time. If I was just in that damn pack, like in Kona in 2019 was my best swim in Kona, I felt like I could do the backstroke. Literally, it was so easy swimming in the pack, and yet it was a lifetime best swim. So you have that aspect. But then you also, when you get out, so you worked harder to go slower. Then you get out, you got to pass more guys, work harder because you have a bigger deficit, which fries your legs, makes it more difficult to execute a good nutrition plan. And then obviously all those surges, etc., really negatively impact your run legs. And then, as you see, it's just a double, triple, quadruple negative for you. So sucking at swimming is a big, big problem. So that's a lot of the negatives of the race. Um, you know, the big positive for me, other than the fact that we got to race, which I am very grateful for, you know what I mean? Doing, I wish we had six races and that was the sixth one and we got to, we got to warm up and, you know, work out the kinks, but we did it, but at least we got to race. And, and so I'm very grateful to challenge and to, uh, to the PTO for putting on the race and for putting up a prize purse because it has been literally, that's pretty well the only income that we had come in this year from racing. Uh, other than the Z Pro Tri series, so those were my only two prize purse purses that I got to take part in. Um, so, so that was great. And then the, I'd say the only other positive from my standpoint was I did have the fastest bike run combo. Um, I believe I was. I think George Goodwin had the second fastest bike run, and he was about. I think I, I bike ran him by about forty two seconds, and then Matt Hansen was uh, forty five forty seven. And then Gustav, I think I had a faster bike run by a minute and two. So um, that's a po obviously a positive that I can at least take some solace in that that I set out three or four months ago to get my bike and run into world class shape. And I knew it was it was a conscious decision. I knew that I had to get my bike run back into very good form to even be competitive because if I just did a four month swim block, I would get annihilated on the bike run because these guys are so strong um so so obviously there was a little bit of a little bit of uh letting the swim subside but i but i was moving back into good swim for me decent swim form now so that's the positive lessons in moving forward is and we've obviously say this at the end of just about every single season for the last five years is i suck at swimming and it's a big problem do you have a uh, a lot of pressure right now me? Yeah. I don't have any pressure. Just a shitty long course athlete. And so I proved with my bike and my run in about four months, I could take my bike and run from like, eh, okay, to why well, I had the fastest bike run against arguably one of the deepest, strongest fields of ITU, mix of ITU and long course guys. And so I know it's in there. And I know I'm, I'm not the most talented swimmer, but I know I'm not as incompetent as it appears on the surface because there is quite a few things that I believe that, that I could be doing better with the swimming. Right off the bat, obviously, I wouldn't wear that restrictive suit. Uh, but it's unacceptable, you know, swimming 25-55 at this level of competition. You don't deserve to win. You don't deserve to, to compete with these guys. I mean, in my mind... If I don't get my swim down for that race down to around 24, 30 or 24 flat, I mean, I just, I don't think you deserve to win. And so I didn't deserve to, to win that race. And I'm glad I did it because I need to, as I devoted myself to the bike and the run over the last four months, that's great. Now I'm not going to let it deteriorate. Now I'm not, I know where I'm at and I know if I'm deteriorating, how I'm falling off of where I was at, I'm going to go even higher, but at least I know where I was at. And relative to the best guys in the world, where that got me. Um, and now for the next, well, indefinitely, but in my mind, at least the next six months, we are going to do that same idea with the swimming. And we are going to utilize YouTube and, and make a, help make ourselves accountable. And also, I just found a guy here in Tucson who owns his own pool, five-lane lap pool, just down the street. So I'll you know, that 70-day layoff that we had during COVID, we could have been swimming if we had known this guy. And also, he's a really good coach. And so we're going to start working with him 
uh, five days a week in the water. And so there's that. And I believe that's something that I haven't really ever stuck to anyway. I mean, I had a few times there where I did swim with the swim club, but it wasn't like this. It wasn't in a in a in a one on one type environment or one on. There's a couple other swimmers, one on four or something environment. And so there's that. And then of course, um, as the as the one hour thing taught me that there's still a lot to be gained on the bike. You know, if you look at my power output relative to other guys, I still am pushing a lot of power, and I'm not really going that much faster. You know. Uh, Sam and I, I believe had similar power outputs, but he weighs a bit more than me. So you could argue that I, in terms of CDA, have a, have a bigger CDA, um, cause he's bigger than me, um, and push basically the same power to go the same speed. So, so that's something I definitely want to continue to hone. I really, really got into the idea of having a more UCI legal position, which I, which I found was advantageous for my biking and running. And so I want to continue to investigate that pathway. And just, I'm just so sick of swimming like this, man. I can't stand it anymore. It's, it's, it's so bad. I think I owe it to everybody. I owe it to myself. I owe it to, to my coaches. I owe it to, to you guys to devote myself and see, is, is it just because I'm absolutely incompetent in the water or is it because maybe there's, you know, lack of commitment as there has been the last couple of years with my bike and the run um, and I do believe it's more of the lack of commitment and the lack of having, you know, eyes looking at you and, and ingraining, you know, better swimming style on a regular basis. Because golf makes the most sense to me in terms of its comparison to swimming. And I don't know too many great golfers who didn't have a lot of input to become good golfers. They weren't just, you know, I'm a guy who probably could go to the driving range every single day and swing and never really get much better at golf because they swing horribly and don't really understand good swing mechanics. And so I believe swimming behaves a lot more like that. But I've been trying to do it and tackle it like the bike and the run where I can just bike and run in my by myself in my, in my pain cave and I can get myself into world-class bike run shape with no input externally. Um, and, but it just, it doesn't work that way. If it were, if swimming worked that way, I'd already be good at swimming. It don't work that way. And so if we keep doing the same crap over and over and over again, I mean, at some point, you know, I hope you guys can call me on it that, and, and I believe it is visible that you'll notice. I always talk about the bike and the run in the YouTube, on the Instagram, whatever. I never talk about the swimming and it's, it's, it's multifactorial as to why. And one is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed and, and embarrassed of my swimming. And two is because I'm not fully engaged. I'm not fully committed. So we need to fix that now. We need to commit. And I thought a telling thing was, I talked to Gustav uh, in drug testing afterwards. And you know he said, so whatever, are you happy with your, are you ha what are you gonna go do now? And I said, well, I'm sick of being a shit swimmer, so I'm gonna go and fix my swimming. And this should tell you this guy's personality because he said, oh yeah, me too. That's exactly what I'm gonna go do. And this guy outswam me by two minutes and 10 seconds. So this is what we're dealing with here now. This is a guy who we're going to have to be, we're going to be going up against, he's a lot younger than I am, so I'll be going up against him for the rest of my career. Um, and so if you wanna have any shot whatsoever at competing, because the moment these guys come to Kona too, I mean, it's game over for me. So it's now or never. That's the moral of the story. So I'm glad there was some positives, a lot of negatives. You're always blinded when you do well. You know, if you do well, you don't really analyze yourself very deeply and you're like, oh, that was good, great job, buddy. And when you don't perform to your expectations when you were fully, fully committed, um, then you, you're very hard on yourself. And I think it's time to be hard on myself in the swimming. It's just, it's, it's enough is enough, guys. Stop every F and season uh, talking about, I got to improve my swimming. It's like, shut the F up and, and, and do something about it. And if you do something about it and you still suck, well, then at least I can go to sleep and say, you know what, I just suck at swimming. Like, I just, I just have no talent. And that was the best I could do. And then I'll be happy with that. But I haven't done that yet. And that there is is what 2021 is going to be about while maintaining my bike or improving my bike in my run. And that'll be hard to improve, but at the very least maintaining where I got them to. So now I'm rambling on, I've rambled on for, oh, I don't know, 20 so minutes. So hopefully Talbot's got lots of nice uh, footage he can put over that. I didn't get any footage. 
I don't know if you remember, but I crashed during your race. I had to go to the ER, dislocated my shoulder, and came back and shot your run. So I hope everyone else enjoyed this long interview. I just did, my shoulder's dislocated. This is what you want to no. All right, back to the action. And I appreciate you guys if you made it this far into the video. Um, sorry for the ramble, but thank you for following along. And we hope to start back real quick because we're in, we're in, we're going down a new journey right now, in my opinion. And we're going to come at you with lots of content. And I think this will be some of the most relatable content because my swimming sucks and. It's going to be a long, hard, arduous process, and I'd like to include you in that. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.